Good day everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Create a Xamarin form stack layout in XAML. 2. Specify the orientation of the stack layout. 3. Control child view alignment and expansion within the stack layout. Before we use the stack layout, let me show something first. Let us create a new project and we name it my stack layout. In Solution Explorer, in the My Stack Layout project, double click mainpage.xaml to open it. Then, in mainpage.xaml, remove all of the template code and replace it with the following code. As you can see I had four buttons. And the next three buttons showing some errors. It says that the content is set more than once. The reason for that is that inside content page, we can only one element, one child. So if you want to add multiple elements on the page, you need to use a layout. And for this video lesson, we are gonna explore stack layout. So what is stack layout? A stack layout is a layout that organizes its children in a one-dimensional stack, either horizontally or vertically. By default, a stack layout is oriented vertically. In addition, a stack layout can be used as a parent layout that contains other child layouts. Now these are the properties that defines the stack layout class. First is orientation of type stack orientation, represents the direction in which child views are positioned. The default value of this property is vertical. Second is spacing of type double, indicates the amount of space between each child view. The default value of this property is six device independent units. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio and add stack layout element to the page. Let's wrap our buttons inside a stack layout element and edit the text property of each button. As you can see, the errors are now gone. Let's run the app. The app runs smoothly. Since our stack layout element can contain multiple elements, it can display all its content. Now, let's go to the code. And we add background color to the stack layout. Remember the new features of Visual Studio, the hot reload, which enables you to make changes to your XAML UI and see them reflected live, without requiring another build and deploy. That's why it reflect immediately to our emulator the changes we made. As you can see, it occupies the whole screen, even though we just have four elements inside the stack layout element. Because by default, stack layout fills its parent, its container. To manipulate the size of the stack layout, let us add another property called vertical options. Then we set its value to center. As you can see, the elements now are at the center of the screen. And its height is determined based on the height of its children, in this case, the four buttons that we added. 
but note, horizontally, it still fills the width of the container. So if want to manipulate also the horizontal size of the stack layout. We need to add another property called horizontal options. We can set it to center, center and expand, end or start. Let us try center. Now, the buttons are right in the middle of the screen. The horizontal options and vertical options properties can be set to fields from the layout options struct, which encapsulates two layout preferences, and this are alignment and expansion. Alignment, the child views preferred alignment, which determines its position and size within its parent layout. Expansion, indicates if the child view should use extra space, if it's available, used only by a stack layout. Let's go back to Visual Studio and explore more properties for stack layout. Let's change the orientation of the stack layout element. By default, the orientation of the stack layout is vertical. Now let's change it to horizontal. The position of the buttons is now arranged before each button. Let's also add padding. Padding can accept one value up to four values. If you're going to pass a single value, the padding around the stack layout will be equal to all sides. If you intend to have different padding to each side, we can pass four values separated by a comma. The first value we passed is for the left side of the element, second is top, third is right, then the last value is for the bottom side of the element. This arrangement is also applied for spacing and margin properties. Spacing is the distance between each element. Let me put a spacing of 20. As you can see, the distance between each buttons increases. And that's the basic properties of stack layout. Now let's make a nested stack layout. Let's wrap up button 4 in another stack layout element. Inside this stack layout, let's add another button and name it button 5. Let's change the background color of this element to see how the inner stack layout position inside the outer stack layout. See how this inner stack layout position inside this outer stack layout. The second stack layout arrange horizontally with button 1, 2, and 3. And the button 4 and 5 arrange vertically inside our second stack layout, which is the default orientation. You can also add other properties to this element like padding, spacing, etc. There you have it. That's our stack layout using XAML. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!